Arsenal have a tough decision to make. Whether we like it or not, Arsenal have to get this decision right. And if they don't, it not only affects us now, like in these next couple of games, but it definitely can affect the rest of our season. I want to get your guys' thoughts on it. And also, we have a Bakayo Saka update. But before we get into it, if you could just very quickly do me a favor and hit like on this video. So before we get into the video, I just want to ask one question of you. I need you to let me know in the comment section. Do you rest Bakayo Saka for the Arsenal's first Champions League game of the season? We're playing Atalanta in two days' time. And the one thing I want to ask you very quickly, do you rest Bakayo Saka? I mean, we'll start with the Bakayo Saka thing because it seems like it was just a cramp. When Bakayo Saka went off against Tottenham, every Arsenal fan in the world thought the worst. Oh my God, we can't have another injury. If we lose Saka, we've already lost Rice, Odegaard, Calafuri, Marino. We can't afford any more injuries. And luckily, the rumours coming out, the whispers behind the scenes are that this is just a cramp and Bakayo Saka should be okay for the next couple of games. And like I said, I'm going to answer the question on if I would rest Saka or not in a second. But first of all, I just want to have a quick word on this Atalanta game. Because it is interesting. But it's our first Champions League game. These are the games you dream of. When the season starts, you think, I can't wait for the Champions League to start. And we're now in a position where we can start to dream. We can start to think of what it might look like to play in the Champions League. Has it come at the best time? If I'm being honest, no, probably not. One saving grace is we will have Declan Rice back, the midfield enforcer, to play in this game. Declan Rice in that midfield helped a whole bunch more. We saw how, I would say good, but how efficient our midfield was in the last game. And that will only improve now with the reintroduction of Declan Rice. But Atalanta are not an easy team to beat. You might hear the name Atalanta and think they're a bit of, like, nothing. They're, they're a nobody. But this is a team who beat... Liverpool 3 0 at Anfield this season, like uh, this year, sorry, 2024. They've beat Liverpool 3 0 at Anfield. So don't think this game is a walkover. Look at some of the players they've got. They've just won the Europa League. They're the current holders of the Europa League. They, Adamola Lookman scored a hat trick in the final. So let's not pretend Atalanta will be a walkover. Let's not pretend Atalanta don't have players that can hurt us. Now, luckily, Arsenal have the best defence in world football. So I will always feel confident, no matter what the game is, going into a game, going into a European fixture. Because look, Ars Arsenal are playing in the strongest league in the world. So we're not going to come across many teams stronger than the best teams in our current division, in our current league. Man City, Liverpool. There's not too many teams out in world football that you can say are better than those kinds of teams. So when I look at a team like Atalanta, I give them their respect. But I definitely look at the game and think, right, we should be winning this game. Arsenal now are at a level where we should be expecting to beat these teams around Europe. Arsenal will be looked at in this competition by all of the other teams in it as a team that they don't want to play. Arsenal are the second best team in the Premier League, the strongest league in the world. Arsenal's a tough game for anyone. So although we have to give Atalanta their respect, they will be looking at us and thinking this is a very, very difficult game. So that might play into our favour. Look, um, Adamola Lookman, I think he's their danger man. If, if I'm looking at the game and trying to break it down, he's the guy I look at and say, if you keep him quiet, you have a good chance of beating them. We know what he can do. He's played two games this season already. One goal, one assist. Like I said, luckily we got the best defence in the world, so I don't see that being a problem. Luckily, we got the, one of the best midfields in the world. We got Declan Rice back. It's going to be interesting to see who partners Declan Rice. And you can let me know in this video, who would you partner with Declan Rice? Because, you know, automatically I think of Partey, but I have another question to ask you. Do you rest Partey in this game? I mean, your automatic response would be, no, this is too big of a game to rest Partey. But he's played a lot of football. This is an injury-prone Thomas Partey. He just played two games for, for Ghana, 90 minutes, and then he comes back and plays the North London derby. So if you're ever looking at a game where, you, where you're thinking, we might need to rest Thomas Partey, this could be it. Like I said, I don't like going into these games and thinking, right, this is a game where we can rest players. Like, this is a Champions League fixture. You should never go into a, a fixture like that and think, right, what players can we rest? But Arsenal are probably in the position where we have to do that. If we had a team like, no offence to these teams, Bournemouth or Leicester next week, 
then you could probably play your strongest team in this game and then rest them next week. That's just the reality. But but we're not. We're playing Atalanta and then on Sunday we've got we've got Man City. And another thing that's confusing me is I thought Champions League were Tuesday and Wednesday. Why are we playing Champions League fixtures? On a Thursday all of a sudden. Now I'm sure it's something to do with a new format. I'm sure I've missed the memo. But I can't understand why Arsenal are playing on a Thursday night. And then playing again on a Sunday. Like that used to be what you do in the Europa League. The, the disadvantage of being in the Europa League is you play Thursday nights. And then you play again on the weekend. Arsenal have been stitched up. Because we play Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Away at Atalanta. And then Sunday away at Man City. Man City are playing... At home on Wednesday and then at home on Sunday. Crazy that Arsenal are being asked to do this. But it's just another thing we have to consider. Now, there's good rumours behind the scenes that I don't know if they're true. There's not enough information out there for me to actually come to you and say, yes, this is 100% true. But the whisper, the word on the grapevine is Mikel Marino could be available like soon. He's being pictured with his sling off in David Rea's uh, Instagram post, it might have been. So that's led to some speculation of people saying Mikel Marino might even feature in this Atalanta game. I want to get your guys' thoughts on it. If he is ready, do you throw him straight in against Atalanta? Because if I'm being honest, I probably don't. Look, I'm excited as everyone else to see the debut of Mikel Marino, see what he can offer because his attributes are incredible. He's so strong. He's so big. He's so good at, at passing. He's so good aerially. He's so good in the jaw. I'm excited to see it as much as you guys. But if he is ready, I don't play him in the Atalanta game. And that might seem crazy because it probably is a game where you need to rest players. But I save him for the Man City game. I go with the element of surprise against Man City. Like they don't get to watch him week in, week out. So they don't know really what to prepare for. So if Marino is ready, I don't play him in the Atalanta game. And if people were to ask me, do you play Bakayo Saka in the Atalanta game? Again, I probably wouldn't risk him. I know you have to play your strongest team. I know it's the Champions League. But there's people on that bench who come on like Sterling, like Gabriel Jesus, like Ethan Waneri, for example, who I think should 100% start against Atalanta. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. So many of us uh, had the conversation around whether Ethan Waneri should start in the North London derby. It probably was a bit too soon for him. It probably was a, a fixture that he was never going to start, but it was still okay to have that conversation. And I think it's still okay to have that conversation now. Do you start Ethan Waneri in the Champions League at 17 years of age? If you're asking me right now, I start him. I would go with a midfield of, and this could change by the time tomorrow's video comes and I do the full breakdown, but I probably go with a Declan Rice, Jorginho and Ethan Waneri midfield. That's probably the midfield I would play because I would rest Thomas Partey for that game against Man City. Like I said, let me know your thoughts on who plays in midfield. Do you play Nwaneri? Do you go with Jorginho, Partey and Rice and go super defensive? I don't know. The, the, the options are limited. I think we definitely need to rest Bukayo Saka. Because like I said, that is a hard choice Arsenal have to make. First game of the Champions League, do you play Saka? Because what about if he gets injured? I'm sure a similar thing happened last season. I'm trying to uh, remember. And it might have even been a Champions League game. Saka was kind of carrying something. And then he played... I think it was a group game. I think it was against Lons and he come off with a bit of an injury and it was like panic stations. So I just don't want that same situation again. If Saka's carrying anything, you rest him for the game against City. That is a crunch tie. That could be a Premier League decider. If we lose that game, that could be like massive come the end of the season and you've lost those three points to City. So for me, I save our best player at the minute in terms of output. Bakayo Saka for the game against City. Like I said, let me know your guys' thoughts on it. Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening. And like I said, before you go, if you could just do me the favor, hit like on this video, just like it and subscribe. And I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day.